one question, I mean, who is from the energy sector in this room? So few. <laughs> <laughs> who is an engineer or software engineer? <laughs> uh, who is... <laughs> There's nobody else. <laughs> uh, with uh, a builder. Okay. We want to identify in a different way. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I'm really, um, maybe we're going to start first with a small introduction. If you can, each of you introduce your, yourself and if you want to start, please. Okay. And, and, uh, I don't know, do, do you hear me? Is it okay? So, okay? so I am uh, Christine Enber, so I am working in the French um, uh, Commissarial Energy Atomic, so at uh, Grenoble, and uh, I am working in the cyber security, uh, and um, the goal is to use blockchain to reinforce uh, uh, privacy and trust uh, above security. And, uh, is it, is it loud enough? enough? Maybe you use mine. So, yes, it's better. So, um, my, I am working at the CIA at Grenoble. Uh, my goal is to use blockchain to reinforce privacy and trust by design above cybersecurity uh, at the level of the physical devices. Uh, so, uh, we are looking um, on many use cases. Uh, in particular in the energy domain because at the CI we are, uh, uh, we, are we make attention on energy first and um, the goal is to uh, see if we can um, build a secure private and trust connected device uh, that use blockchain to share goods in uh, particular in the energy domain. So, uh, thank you for this great space, by the way. I really feel, uh, well, very thankful. And thank you for appearing. I'm curious who are the others just interested, or uh, are you from Web3 or completely new to this space? Those who didn't re reach their arms. Okay. Interested, so, curious minds. Okay. So, are there people that don't know nothing about blockchain here? Okay, <laughs> so these are the others it didn't identify. So to myself, uh, I'm Shabnam, and um, I started in computer science, directly went into peer-to-peer -peer technologies. It was just amazing to imagine you can build a network of uh, computers um, and share anything you want, right? And back then it was peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, obviously, 2000s. Um, and then I started working in research in Siemens, uh, which is a multinational corporation, a huge endeavor. Uh, it has um, communications uh, division back then. It went bankrupt because they didn't see the waves coming. <laughs> um, but also healthcare, energy. So for a researcher, it's a fantastic place to be. And when I started there, again, we were in communications, but then uh, when Siemens Communications went bankrupt, I was looking for where else could I apply these peer-to-peer -peer technologies. And back then, around 2008, smart grids were just emerging, and solar storage were actually becoming, in research terms, viable. So we had a lot of uh, research interest there in applying peer-to-peer -peer technologies in decentralized energy systems. And that was 2008. <laughs> and I must say, ever since uh, solar and storage, the whole industry is struggling to find a viable business model. And why? Because these are decentralized energy systems that are put on people's and uh, businesses' rooftops, right? And that doesn't pay off for big multinationals like Siemens. <laughs> so when energy and blockchain met in 2017, I almost missed that. Um, 2016 is when I heard, and in 2017 I left Siemens and jumped into the cold water. <laughs> and uh, that was my first wave, and looking back, it's the second wave of this hype, boom and bust, or uh, bear and bull. 
So that's my story until here, a computer scientist and energy nerd, and um, still researching how we can actually bootstrap decentralized business and financial models with the participation of people and organizations that have solar on their roofs, and how can we coordinate, um, well, um, also coordinate to solve the issues of this uh, solar industry, which uh, still needs to take care of um, well, circularity, right? What happens with the solar panels and so on and so forth. So these are me and the topics that I have in my head almost all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Samdem. And so we, we, we were talking just before with um, Christine and about the fact, and, and you mentioned it, that there was a time where decentralization, blockchain, and energy met. There is um, um, an issue of you know small um, uh, delocalized um, businesses that need some financing, but in general. I also, uh, and I would like if you can uh, maybe um, respond to that, um, Christine, highlight, would like to highlight that actually um, the question of having energy as a decentralized supply or a centralized supply is a very st social structural question. It means that our societies are built on the centralization of energy. Our democracies or non-democracies, our um, institutions are built, linked to the way the energy is provided to uh, the um, people. So you were talking about the right to energy, for example, Christine. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the question of the decentralization is coming with the, with the renewable, renewable uh, energy. So when uh, the energy is produced by uh, atomic central, there is no decentralization, in fact. But uh, and what, what does that mean? That there is no decentralization. By because uh, um, yes, <laughs> because uh, the energy we cannot store it for a long time, may, many hours, but no longer. So it must be produced uh, at the demand when it will be consumed. And this is a big difficulty, in fact. And so, with a renewable energy, um, we will uh, produce energy um, in a, um, at low quantity and locally. So, the, the, the question to share it uh, is very interesting in this context, because uh, we will not transport uh, energy uh, that is locally produce at a very in a very low amount we will use it uh, now in fact and so uh, we 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 come with the idea to to share it to share it also at a citizen level because we become all consumer actors with a photovoltaic panel for example or um, or other um, energy source that uh, we can uh, manage by, by ourselves. And so uh, the question will be how to share it, because uh, when my photovoltaic panels produce energy, I am not always at home to consume it now, and I have not uh, battery to, 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 to maintain it for, for so, some hours. So uh, what will I do with it? Uh, can I share it when uh, the energy is here? That is the question, in fact. And uh, yes, the question of Jeanne is to, is to say that uh, in France, uh, being uh, provided by uh, electricity is a right. So uh, the state, in fact, uh, should uh, adapt uh, the production of energy to be able to provide electricity to everybody. But this uh, is very complicated, in fact, because um, uh, it is RTE in France, but uh, uh, there is um, a firm that should be able to predict um, in two or three days what will be uh, the consumption in order to, um, to uh, produce the right amount of energy to cover the demand. And this is very difficult, and this is a, a huge difficulty in a decentralized way, in fact. 
and, and it means in, it means institutions. So I think I, I, I hope you understand. You know, I mean, how deep is the transformation? Because the question of sharing goods in general, you know, is is an early stage of um, the way we have been. Um, uh, organized as societies, you know, you can think about how you were sharing the surplus of, of the crops, for example, in the Middle Age. And this is actually the, uh, um, the ancestors of, of um, finance is about how you manage stocks, you know, and energy is behind the possibilities of producing these goods. So just for you to understand the, 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 the deep um, aspect of that and how it's um, an, an opportunity to change uh, um, the, uh, the society. And so what, what do you think, I mean, from your experience also, Sebnem, in terms of your project in the, when you started before Unergy Crypto? So, Actually, two things. Um, one is on my last day at Siemens, uh, last day of June, I was in Berlin co-founding the German Blockchain Association. Why? Because by then I was at least wise enough to know who runs, <laughs> uh, who makes the rules, right? So uh, this regulatory hacking or regulatory outreach um, is a big issue. Uh, in energy, and if we mix it with tokenization, funding, flexibilization, uh, flexible payments of solar, basically, or, or decentralized energy, basically upheavaling the whole uh, system, it requires regulatory sandboxes. So we can actually trial these uh, innovations in a way um, that can work with, within the current system. So. A uh, right to electricity, a uh, right to access to electricity is a right, but that also means that the grid operator says, hey, if you want to, for us to keep the lights on, you play by our rules, and they are just not for decentralized business. We are built for the last 150 years for a central power plants distributing to the loads. They don't even call you consumers, not even consume actors, <laughs> so loads. Uh, but this is changing, finally, uh, since I think it was 2021, four years after this regulatory outreach, uh, that the European Commission brought out a directive that allows for peer-to-peer -peer energy trading within communities. It's called the Renewable Energy Directive, Renewable Energy Communities Directive. That means, uh, actually, on a European level, it's clear that we should have also the right to share the electricity that we have in surplus with the vicinity. Why? Because it is technically definitely possible. The electricity grids are made such that electricity is instantaneously available. It doesn't really flow and you have to switch on stuff. And so uh, that's a bit of the difficulty that we don't have any knowledge or any intuition how these systems could be redesigned uh, if the system redesign needs us as prosumers or active consumers but we just think okay the electricity comes from the socket right uh, and i don't know how to put solar panels on these roofs so where do we start so it's um, that type of difficulty now that the regulatory playgrounds are there or, or the possibilities are there we still need people to demand uh, that and those laws are going to be implemented nationally. Just one example, um, the Smart Grids initiative since 2008 demands smart meters so that people actually know what is being consumed and produced so that this flexibilization that you mentioned, Christine, can become a possibility at all. Imagine you're trying to lose weight, but you don't have a scale and no mirror, and no one's telling you. <laughs> so. And now with these smart meters, it's a possibility. And that directive and the opening up uh, that smart meters can be installed exists since 2008, right? And in Germany, the local implementation of the law managed to push it forward. I don't even want to count the years. So these difficulties, again, um, what I'm currently learning is, or it was obvious, <laughs> but uh, 
these decentralized business and financial models require participation, meaning it requires each one of us to actually, anyone who uses, has electrical appliance, all of you, uh, actually demand for um, more sustainable, decentralized, more energy efficient ways to supply or to redesign our systems. And as you say, it's very difficult because everything um, builds on electricity or, or energy and it's very difficult for entire economies to change. So it, we need to also have this bottom-up activism and that's why I started calling myself chief activist <laughs> at Unity Crypto because not only that we need to explain this on the decentralized energy side but also on the DeFi side I need to explain all those who are actually very proficient in crypto and trading that uh, you know all these APYs and so on uh, would actually have a real impact if they were connected to revenues from distributed solar in in our communities and and our countries. Okay, so th the question of, of uh, connecting to revenue, but now you were. I wanted to jump on you know, something else you just said because we were talking about sandbox. And so, uh, Christine, you were talking also about examples, so maybe it's time that you, you know, share about some of the use cases uh, okay. that can help us uh, uh, about this, if it's uh, uh, fine, uh, unless you, you want to talk about them yet. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yes, we, we are working on several use cases, but uh, today I would like to share with you uh, one of them uh, that um, may be interesting in this uh, context. Um, we work uh, um, in a condominium, so uh, in Lyon, in fact, uh, in a group of, um, of, uh, of building uh, whose name is Ikari. And, uh, Can you speak louder? Uh, okay, so yes, it's better. So um, on the, uh, the goal is to study how to share um, electricity that uh, is produced uh, local at the at the level of the buildings in a co-ownership. So um, the the electricity that, that is produced in the roof, for example, with a photovoltaic panel, is a common good of the co-ownership of the condominium. On the but the, the consumption of energy is um, is personal. So the production is in common, is a common good, but the consumption is personal. And so um, uh, this use case uh, raises many challenges, in fact, because um, the, first, uh, uh, the first one is to be able to measure um, the consumption of uh, all the residents uh, and to know what is uh, self-consumed uh, and what is coming from the electrical grid, so from the electric grid. Um, when we are able to do that, it's not so easy. We put some um, IoT uh, in uh, the Linky uh, counter. And uh, in the concrete life, uh, this is not so easy because um, there is um, a lock in, the, in your linky counter, and so you cannot put IoT uh, easily. You, you, you should uh, cut <laughs> the lock, so any of this is not uh, <laughs> agree. So uh, this is the first step that is not so easy in the through life. So we have um, an ecosystem of actors, so we must, uh, we must uh, speak uh, with with them in order to, to make experiments, first experiments, in fact. And the, when we do that, we are able to measure what is self-consumed and what is coming from the electric grid. Uh, another uh, challenge to, 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 to raise is that um, the energy cannot be a store. If it is because we have battery, in fact, it, the battery have an autonomy, is autonomous for five hours. So people who work and uh, who are at home only in the evening cannot use the self and self consume energy because uh, the energy that is produced by photovoltaic panel are produced uh, between 12 and um, so the peak of the productivity is at 12. 
And so uh, the residents that are here in, at the midday can use it, but the residents that uh, are not uh, at their home uh, at midday will not be, it, will, it will not be so easy to use it. So um, we uh, tokenize the kilowatt hour that is produced by the, the co-ownership, by the condominium, uh, in order to be able to ensure a fairness between the residents. So uh, uh, the residents that are here on that uh, self-consume the, uh, so the, 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 the energy that is produced locally uh, will, um, will consume the, 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 the token. And the other one um, will be able to, uh, so they will um, own token, they will win token, and they, they will be able to uh, spend their token in um, uh, uh, commerce in, uh, uh, that uh, are in but the... Is, in is it an initiative that already started? I mean, like, do you already have, like, inhabitants uh, with tokens? It's not scale now. No, it but is I mean, just an experiment. So what is the size of the experiment? Uh, at the size, it is uh, three buildings. Three buildings. Three buildings. Okay, n next to your research center, or I mean, uh, yes, uh, it is uh, next to our research center. Yes. Okay, so you already gave token to some people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, so they can uh, uh, send people in shop. But uh, um, we can imagine buildings where there, there are no shop, in fact, in the ground floor. So uh, we have, have another idea that uh, may, interesting, may, may, may be interesting. So uh, as the electricity cannot be um, stored, in fact, uh, the best way to use it uh, now is to uh, resell it outside the, the condominium. And so uh, the idea is to uh, sell it at uh, an, electri an, an uh, electric car uh, charging point. So uh, the condominium can uh, uh, resell the energy that is produced uh, by co-owner to uh, everybody uh, through uh, the charging of an electric car. But um, to do that, we need another time to tokenize uh, the energy. And so the, the people who will uh, charge their car will pay through uh, a wallet. Uh, and the wallet should be able to, be, to connect to the blockchain of the, of the co-ownership, in fact. So um, we use smart contract to, to do this, uh, this experiment. And how, do, uh, how do you feel about this experiment so far? And how do you feel about the conversation with the ecosystem where you have to explain that you need to tokenize energy? <laughs> um, I think it's, it's a very interesting experiment um, that brings uh, energy, uh, energy to everybody, but also to enable everybody to use easily a blockchain yeah. because uh, we need only <laughs> uh, a wallet enabled to connect with, um, with the blockchain of the co-ownership. And in fact, we would like to bring uh, this innovation to, um, to uh, large people. So we try to, to do that with a nano ledger that is uh, in the market, in fact. And we configure uh, the nano ledger to be able to, um, to use our um, token uh, through a smart contract and to pay uh, the, the charge of an electric car. So, so that, that is possible, in fact. So that, that reminds me actually of a, of a story from back then in 2016, there was a, you know, many companies or many organizations actually ICO'd interesting ones in Power Ledger in Australia. And one is uh, Grid Plus in US. And those were the two ones that I, you know, my first time I'm trying to grasp what's happening. And I am in energy, so I understand at least part of the business. Um, and anyways, they were able to raise millions. You know, that wasn't an issue. So what functions today and back then and likely forever is this technology right now is capable of transacting value across the internet with very little friction. One friction is you have to have a wallet. And the issue with that 
in actually bringing tokens for use in energy to the people is it's so damn hard to actually have a wallet. Once you have that, you have conscious, uh, constant anxiety, okay, that you're going to screw up, uh, lose your keys, and so on and so forth. So finally, this year, <laughs> apparently, in the Ethereum uh, community conference, the mood is there that it's possible that soon, trademarked, we're going to have as easy access to those wallets as we have access to our email accounts. Let's see, but that's one issue before that uh, is actually happening that I can use uh, my wallet and with all the tokens in there and um, uh, you know, one of them is actually um, you know, investing in, in infrastructure and those tokens I really don't want to lose. Uh, it's just not some kilowatt hours, but maybe tens of thousands of um, yeah, representative solar panels that represent tens of thousands of euros. But what happened with Grid Plus is they started with those, I don't know, 35 millions and now they are uh, a hardware wallet company. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly so there is this issue that they have to solve and now they have to solve this hardware wallet issue and maybe they pivot back to become actually someone or, or an organization that can uh, enable that but that's you know these interesting twists once you have the money you have to do something with it and if people are not using your uh, you know, uh, electricity sharing idea or theirs were wholesale uh, electricity buy and supply, then you have to pivot and do something meaningful. I don't know how they pulled off the pivot, I didn't uh, look at them uh, any further. You know, so many people actually invested in energy use case, now they have a hardware wallet. <laughs> what happens then? So, but to get to that point, like, Exactly, that's what we need, and also actually being able to transact via wallets um, is the other part. But then, so many things have to happen, and what I just know after five years, like, personally, I want to go for things that are possible today, and then develop what can become possible as it does. Okay, right? so, so what I understand is that you are, um, you know, in between making the um, blockchain community understanding that you need some tools that are easier to use, you know, if you want to move on with the use case beyond the blockchain community. That's one challenge, if I understand well. On the other hand, you have the, let's say, political challenge of making, you know, uh, political institutions understanding uh, and uh, the European Union that, you know, if we want to um, um, add solutions in terms of renewable energy, we need to go through tokenization. So ca can you talk a little bit about you know, your experience with institutions and uh, or maybe how much they understood it? And um, yes, if you want, I mean, I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, maybe... Um, yes, go on, go on. With what you feel. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Another, uh, it's... No, maybe it's, it's not true what I say. It's okay. Yes, it is, but uh, <laughs> indirectly. Um, when we put an IoT in our linky counter, we are able to measure the energy, okay. But um, who is the owner of the linky counter? This is uh, the question. Is it Enedis who is the owner? Okay, so you know what is a leaky uh, counter? It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's yes. a meter, as it's a European... Is it, uh, is it, it is in France. In, in France, we have yes. like a meter now that is uh, 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 mandatory into each. Uh, in uh, each uh, flat in France, in yes. each. Uh, it's mandatory. So, so it's a meter. We have it, this measurement of electricity. Yes, it is installed by Enedis, in fact, who is the owner of the object, of the, of the counter. But uh, uh, there is also the owner of the flat on the resident that may be different. So. Uh, 
who is uh, the owner of the energy produced. In fact, <laughs> uh, this is a question on who is the owner of, of the measurement. device, because the device uh, is important in this, in this use, use case. And on is it something that are discussed at an institutional level? I mean, um, I, I would like to bring another question in that. Yes. So we put IoT on the, on the linky to be able to um, to connect uh, the mesure to a blockchain because the, the linky is not able to do that, in fact. Uh, this is possible and we have a peripheral on the linky to enable that. But, um, uh, but uh, uh, it's not enough because uh, we will be um, uh, re re uh, um, incentive for uh, the electricity that is produced. So what it's, do you not, mean with this? it's not the object will, who will be incentive, it is a, a person. So uh, how do we uh, make the link, the connection between the person who will be incentive and uh, the, the linky who measure the electricity produced and consume? So that's very similar to any kind of MRV measure reporting, you know, verification uh, yes, processes. Yes, it is. Uh, and that's exactly what we have to face, not only in blockchain, but in sustainability in general. This question of measurement and incentivization. So I, 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 I don't want to interrupt you, you if you want to finish, but I have another question for both of you. <laughs> yes, and so we speak with um, French uh, institutional to um, to go on on this question because we need to uh, identify uh, the person who will be incentive and so to to touch the identity uh, that is protected in France and so um, and so on so uh, so this brings the question of self sovereign identity. Uh, there, there will, uh, this evening there yes. is a panel on this question. Uh, it will be very interesting because I think that it covers many use cases in fact. And uh, in our use case, the, the question is also how to uh, uh, endorse and all our people uh, that is using who is using a self-sovereign identity solution is, al is able to enroll an IoT device uh, and the IoT device measures its, his good, in fact. So we need to have a secure link between the, the, the two um, entities, that is uh, uh, the person with my identity on the, my object, and I um, need to trust my object because my asset, my good, is, um, is measured in the object I own. So, do you want to add something? No, your question first, otherwise <laughs> you're going to explode. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, I just want, because we, we have like, uh, let's say, uh, maybe 10 minutes left, okay. uh, and um, I, I was, so first, I really understand when I listen to you how much it's a uh, political question and how much you have to educate people. Now I wonder, can we you know, look at that from a, gl um, a global south, global north perspective? You know? mm -hmm. uh, are the challenges more or less the same? Uh, um, uh, is there some connection between the way we are thinking about sustainable energy today in Europe and connection about how we uh, look at sustainable energy in the global south which is a term I hate, but never mind. <laughs> in yeah. countries that, that uh, I don't know, have a huge access to solar, for example. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there is no grid to be disrupted and so on and so forth. So that was actually also um, the way after Siemens, I s immediately talked to SMAPI, which is an energy monitoring device um, seller uh, who are open to innovation. And we said, okay, we're going to put this energy agent on it and it's going to but then the first thing we was stopped by was this electrical um, um, main board that you have to open and you have to put the clamps on it and it's a no-go in Germany in Germany uh, and in and exactly so that was the first hurdle so no and then um, um, 
the next thing was, okay, it's really hard here. It was already 2018. And that's when I met Thorsten Schreiber, um, the founder, and Aida, the founders of Africa Green Tech. And what they have is a solar tainer, which means it's a container that inside has a battery and 45 kilowatt peaks of solar panels that you can drive to far off places and uh, once opened up it becomes an electrical grid for a village of 4,000 people. So, and it still has more smart grid in it than the German uh, electricity grid. And, uh, yes, yes, even in France, for sure. So, because it's, it's a container and then the, the first question is like who owns what, uh, right? Because it has actually a uh, company behind, it has investors, and there already we have the in, in incentive alignment problem because investors in the solar tainer want to have their 5 to 7% uh, annual returns within seven years. And um, so there's a whole lot of issues there we can't go into, but once uh, this uh, solar tainer, and we could equip it with all the technology, which is currently standard IoT, uh, and even embedding the tokenization part into the, the route, into the um, main board in the solar tainer and so on, isn't the technical issue. But then what was really strange for me is to come up with a tokenization protocol incentivizing when people use electricity to make most of the solar rooftops so it turns more returns faster to the investors. That was when I was like, okay, what are we doing here, right? I am sitting in Munich coming up with a protocol that's going to incentivize people having electricity for the first time and, um, you know, steer them when to use electricity, right? So it becomes beneficial to the operator and to the investor. And that was like, okay. <laughs> what, was okay? What, what do you mean by it was okay? It, it was not okay. We need also a new ownership model, right? And that's where you come in uh, with you, okay, who owns uh, it? I mean, if someone is incentivized, used to electricity to actually make the return on invest faster, uh, it's that person has as much skin in the game as the operator who got the money from the investors. So they should co-own it. And these were the things that we started with, but really, um, the issue with solar, putting solar on rooftops or anywhere in, uh, in general, it's a huge logistical uh, endeavor. It's a business and it's um, a distributed business. So all of these difficulties and then actually doing it in, um, you know, in war regions, which has huge social impact, but it's highly risky from a financial point of view. That was an endeavor like, okay, I don't know how to solve it, but Torsten and, and Africa Green Tech went for crowdfunding and it works fine enough. And that's made me also realize, hey, actually we want to put solar and get people to first use solar, and then we are going to figure out how to co-own, how to incentivize, and how to make this participation really equal. And accountable is easy because we have tokenization. But the how, the bootstrapping part, is the big question, right? So, yes, so how you, you create the ownership link to how you finance it. I mean, is it something, uh, Christine, that you have been thinking of in this era, uh, in terms of you know, um, a project that are um, or discussion with your colleague from the Global South, for example, or some different uh, way of consuming or, or providing energy? Is it something, uh, or, or you're focusing more on your yes, own Yes, uh, it's, uh, it's subject that we discuss. I, I just want to come back on, um, on, on the way to um, it's easy to tokenize and to use token to measure, okay, but we have um, uh, another challenge is uh, this subject that is uh, to respect the um, GDPR regulation because we can tokenize kilowatt hour, but the consumption is uh, private and uh, it is a uh, private uh, data, so we cannot share it on a ledger even by a token. And so we need uh, to uh, develop uh, uh, more uh, smart, uh, smart contract <laughs> in order to uh, 
to protect the confidential data. Uh, in, in the example of, um, of the use case, uh, the energy that, that is uh, produced in co-ownership is confidential at the level of the building, of the, of the condominium, but the, the energy that, that is uh, consumed by uh, people are confidential at the level of the person. So we need to address this, uh, this different scale of confidentiality, even with token. Yeah, that's right. And have you looked into this whole zero knowledge proof or privacy preserving data analysis? Yes, we are. How, are, how far are they away from? Uh, uh, it's, um, so so, so it depends on the level of confidentiality. On the, um, uh, so we need governance. On the, on the central uh, registry to, uh, to protect uh, the data that uh, must be protected and uh, in the use case of, um, of the co-ownership of energy we, um, we uh, work with the syndic uh, because uh, when we live we live in a, in a building, the, we have access to the account of the syndic, so it, it ensures uh, the confidentiality at the level of the condominium. This is an example, but we need to come back to some uh, go governance to ensure the confidentiality of the data and the old knowledge proof in order to make the link with the proof of the data on the blockchain in order to uh, make uh, the data, uh, to make the data provable to everyone uh, through the blockchain, in fact, S uh, through the zero knowledge proof techniques. I'm really impressed by the, the level of complexity and diversity <laughs> and multidisciplinary that you have to face. And I mean, you're so courageous, both of you. <laughs> you know, just like moving mountains and so many different mountains, actually. Yeah. That's, that's very impressive and I, uh, that's probably also something we, we need to be aware of. So just as a conclusion before we, we start uh, with uh, the next part of the workshop, uh, of the panel discussion, uh, um, if you want one word to conclude each of you. So, so maybe, um, yeah, a bit more than one word, if it's okay, just to say what is today possible, really, after all what you've seen. So today with Unergy, um, and I'm working with them, and as the Unergy crypto activist, uh, chief activist, what is possible is make the real world asset or regenerative finance aspect of these solar rooftops on commercial and industrial uh, buildings understandable for the crypto world. That is possible and that's my job. <laughs> the other part, as you've seen, is quite difficult, but inside those buildings, uh, what we can do is a differential uh, profile. So whatever is produced on the rooftop is consumed locally. That means that much dirty electricity was not consumed, so that's also the environmental value of how you can calculate that. If you're interested, we can go deeper into that in the, in the free, free roaming session. But then, basically, and then what you can do is you can definitely publicize what is being fed into the grid. So, and the production, how much it's produced, that's when I had to convince energy stakeholders that that data is good, you know, just open it up, please. <laughs> And that's what you can see on when you go to IC Finance and you go to the pools, that's where you see the projects and the, the um, uh, buildings that we have already connected as a minimally viable product so it, people can test what it is. So again, like it's not perfect solution, it's not solves it all, but in those uh, commercial industrial buildings, we can solve this confidentiality issue and sharing data in a way, but a lot uh, we need to bring in with respect to um, governance, like who are the people who are going to make decisions about the products and um, data exchange uh, definitions, what makes the data, uh, the shared data trustable enough 
enough? Who is going to analyze the data? Are we going to open it up to community analysis, meaning designers, developers, but also data scientists can join and actually validate the data, etc. So there are solutions, and it's on that level. There is a very tiny, uh, how they call it, silver lining that is solar rooftop on commercial and industrial. What we do with energy, where we can actually make this whole participation viable starting today, but a lot of the things that you mentioned, Christine, needs to be developed. But that's also something, uh, the crypto industry innovation, the open innovation here is, isn't anywhere else, so I'm super happy that I made the leap, and I trust that we're going to move forward. But personally, and I hope many of you will, will also join on that path, that we actually make things that are possible today really possible by participating, right? Without Without the participation of us, all these tokens are going to be traded, <laughs> and that's it. And that's not what I want to mint a token for. So thank you so much for making it possible <laughs> yes, so I, and coming here. Okay, last word to Christine, and then I hope it, uh, last word to Christine, and then we go on with the group. The group. Okay, so to conclude, I, I just want to bring attention of um, maybe the complexity and the difficulty to make the link between the virtual world of the token on the blockchain, on the currency. Uh, we can uh, build a very interesting uh, use case and application on the ledger, but how to bring it in the real life? That is, that is a real question that is not so easy to, uh, to, to, to study, in fact. And uh, the electricity is an example because uh, it is a physical, uh, a physical amount. And uh, how to bring it? It is in the physical world. And, um, and yes, make the, 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 the bridge be between the vi virtual world and the real world is a, a, a real uh, need to uh, to share good uh, in our real life. So thank you very much for... Uh okay, thank you so much, uh, Sebnem and Christine. <laughs>